I'm like a kid at a bar mitzvah that just got access to the candy bar, and I'm just going crazy eating everything. I'm completely soaking it up. I got off the plane with Lorenza Izzo. We went, went literally from the plane to the slopes and started skiing. I've been, I've been waking up early to ski in the morning, and then we go right to do press. I mean, I got the other day, the day of our premiere, I got to wake up, go skiing, do interviews, be with my friends. We had a pre-party with Keanu Reeves, the whole cast, and then the premiere, which brought the house down. It was an amazing, amazing response. Uh, it was like one of the best days of my life. I was like, you could actually track this as like one of the two or three greatest days of my existence. I'm so happy. Knock Knock is uh, about a married man, played by Keanu Reeves, who has a seemingly happy life. Uh, he's left alone for the weekend when his wife and kids go away to, to their beach house, and two uh, beautiful young girls show up on his doorstep and offer him temptation, which he succumbs to, and trouble ensues. Um, his life kind of falls apart. Everything unravels. Um, and Keanu is amazing. I mean, the, the whole movie is about this. There's, you know, there's no good guy. There's no bad guy. Really, it's about these temptations, these choices we make in life and the repercussions. And Keanu is an incredible actor, and he was totally game to humiliate himself or, or let the girls really emasculate him. There's, there's moments where he, he's... We're so used to seeing Keanu Reeves as the action hero saving the world. It's really fun to watch him squirm and not be in control. And it's almost like the cat in the hat. Like once these, it's like he's opened Pandora's box and he can't get rid of these girls. And they're always one step ahead of him. And Keanu showed up with his long hair. And I was like, Keanu, do you, can we cut your hair? He's like, what should I do with my hair for the movie? I was like, actually, can we cut it? Like that's almost like castrating. Like, well, and so we saw Keanu with long hair. So we said his character in the beginning, his wife's like, you should get a haircut. And he's like, no, I like my hair. It's cool. And his kid's like, dad, why don't you get a haircut? And of course, later the girls, you know, break out the scissors and, and cut his hair. So Keanu is amazing. I made this film in a very irresponsible way that I would never, never recommend, but it actually worked this time. Um, last January, I was writing the script with Nicolas Lopez and Guillermo Amoedo. We had, we had just made The Green Inferno and we were writing and, um, and so we, we had the script ready, but we didn't have the money. But I put down the money for the house. We found this incredible house in Santiago, Chile. And we put down the deposit and said, okay, it's th the family said they were going to move out in April. Now, this is January. So we said, all right, we'll, get, we'll raise the money in February. Easy. Which was ridiculous because then w we had to start paying for the art department. So Tim DeGray, our producer, stepped up and put in $200,000 with no guarantee of anything so we could start building the statues that we're later going to demolish in the movie. Um, so we're now 200000 in, and it's February, and we don't have the money, and by March, we didn't have the financing. We had people that were sort of interested, but we didn't have a lead actor, and we, we went to the Oscars. Colleen Camp called me, and she goes, I have a plan. We're going to go to the Oscars. Now, Colleen is very tied in with a lot of people at the studios, and Paramount gave us two tickets, so we went to the Oscars, because she's an American hustle that year. She's like, we'll just use the excuse of we're, we're with David O. Russell, because I've been writing a film with David O. Russell called The Hive. The, the Hive, no voice. Um, we went out to the bar and we ran around and we see like different financiers and we're like, please, we need to make a movie. We need to make a movie. And the first person we ran into was Cassian Elways, who's an old friend and he had sold Cabin Fever and we've known each other many years. Cassian said, send this to me. So I sent it from my phone and he read it and the next morning he's like, this is amazing, I wanna do it. And he said, who's your top choice? I was like, well, I'd love to get someone. I know you just work with Keanu Reeves. Be He's like, I think Keanu's a great idea. I think he'd love this and I'm gonna get it to him. And so he forwarded the script to Keanu, and the next day, like Keanu read, he's like, I love it. I, want to, I got on Skype with him, and he's like, this is great, this reminds me of funny games, it's disturbing, this is, I've never played a role like this. And it was, uh, it, it was amazing. From there, once Keanu came on, we got the financing like that, and two weeks later, we were in prep, and sh we actually were shooting in April. I love going to see movies in theaters, but people also love watching them in their home systems. I want to do whatever's smartest for the movie. You know, I went on a situation with Last Exorcism where I made the movie for a million and a half dollars, it made $70 million worldwide. And people were saying, well, it didn't make a profit because they spent $25 million advertising it. And you're like, how is that even possible? And then my friend Nick Jarecki made Arbitrage and they did this DOD. And, and Nick, is, Nick is the one who said, do not be afraid of VOD or day and date. Like I have like, done very well on Arbitrage. And that movie got Oscar nominations. So I think that there is, I think that now the world is changing and people are consuming entertainment differently. And you look at what the inter, I mean, obviously the interview is a very specific deception, but that movie, it's 40 million. So I think that the taboo of VOD is gone. And I always want to do what's smartest for the movie. You know, we're discussing with everyone, what is the smartest, best release fan? Is that going to be a wide release or is that going to be a smaller? Um, there's no way to say. For me, it's all about who has the best campaign, what time of year are they putting it out, how are they going to sell it. There's a whole Latino campaign that we can do with Knock Knock because we have l these fantastic actresses, Lorenza Izzo and Ana de Armas. And Lorenza, 
um, she's Chilean and English is not her first language. Spanish is her first language. So we're going to really push the girls out in a huge Latin campaign. Um, so who, it's really for me, I'm, I'm very excited by whoever has the smartest plan. But honestly, I'm open to anything.